Hi everyone, I'm Nick, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to properly clean and maintain your ECM CASA 5. So if you've been brewing or steaming for a while and you're noticing some buildup in places, we'll figure out how we can get rid of that and which products to use to make sure that your machine is squeaky clean. So let's get started. All right, to start things off, I want to first go over some best practices that you could do daily to help your machine. Now, this is coming from our service manager whose advice is based on the things that you can do to ensure the most longevity from your purchase. Let's go ahead though and start with our portafilter. If you've watched any of my previous videos, then you know that I've been brewing up a storm here on the Casa 5. What we'll wanna do first, and always have a towel handy, is go ahead and take our back flush disc and use that to eject our portafilter basket. So simply line that up when it's flipped upside down, of course, along one of these tabs, and you can start to pry out the basket that's already inside the portafilter. Once it's loose enough, you can go right ahead and lift it out. And if your machine is hot, you may wanna wait for it to cool off before attempting this. This is a good opportunity for us now to actually take a look at the inside of our portafilter head and the back of our basket here. So both of these are areas where coffee oils can collect and build over time. So being able to visualize what that looks like inside of the portafilter on a daily basis is going to help you understand just how dirty things are getting. So what we can do now though is inspect, oop, <laughs> careful there, it's a little slippery. Put that back flush disc in and I'm just going to look down at the group itself. So I can see there's a little bit of coffee on there and that's what our little brush here is for. Move my basket and portafilter out of the way and then run some water and give it a little scrub, basically to get any of those loose grinds off, right? And so those grinds, sometimes they can't get flushed out of things like the solenoid valve um, or the basket either. So they'll just kind of hang out in there. So you can use that brush or if you want even something like a towel. Now, I've got the back flush disc in because what we're gonna do is basically called water back flushing, which the service manager recommends as something to do at the end of the day. And that's basically just gonna get anything else that's loose in there back flushed out through the solenoid valve and into the drip tray. So to do that, we'll simply hit the brew button with the back flush disc inserted, and then that's going to run the pump. We'll do that for maybe five to 10 seconds with just our water in there, purge it out, and then do it again for another two times. And that's how you would water back flush. But let's take it a step further now. Let's say that actually we're at the end of the week. Our recommendation is that if you are pulling two to three shots with your machine every day, including for your milk drinks, that you'll want to back flush with an actual detergent once a week. So for back flushing, we do recommend Ernex Kafiza. It's fairly ubiquitous as far as backflush detergents and cleaners are concerned. So what you would do for that is simply measure out about three grams, which really isn't too much. It's much less even than what's in the scoop that comes with the Casa 5, if you need a point of reference. Get that into the backflush disc. So I'll go ahead and do that now, and we can talk about just what the process of backflushing looks like. Again, if you do this once a week, say if you're skipping the step to do some water backflushing, this is still a good opportunity for you to be able to check the cleanliness of your basket and porta filter. So I'll go right on ahead though and pour just a tiny bit of this kafiza in here. Three grams again is not very much. And I'll show you about how much I've put in there. So that's what looks to me to be about three grams. If you look at uh, ground coffee, for instance, if you're pulling shots a lot and you're using a scale that's pretty precise, you'll start getting better at eyeballing uh, something like this. And so basically we've got the kafiza in here and at minimum, you should do basically five flushes of water into this detergent cleaner, and you'll do them so it's a flush for 10 seconds, running the pump for 10 seconds, purge out, 
wait for five, and then repeat that four more times. Because this cleaner is not all going to get dissolved on that first flush. You are going to need to engage with it with the water multiple times. And then once you've actually done those five flushes, you'll do another five flushes with clean water to make sure that we've cleaned out any of the detergent cleaner that's still inside the group or that may be in the solenoid valve. But our service manager does recommend that if you really wanna be thorough, you'll run the pump as many times as it takes to dissolve all of the detergent cleaner in there. So all we'll do then for this is simply go ahead again with that back flush disc in place, lock it in, and then we'll run the pump. So I'm not sure if you can see, but there is now a kind of foam that has been discharged into the drip tray via the solenoid valve, which shows us that the kafiza has started to foam up from the water. And if you want to, if you're concerned about splashing, you could put your towel actually right up here on top to catch water so that it's not splashing up from the drip tray. While you're back flushing, it's going to be pretty likely that you'll see some brown foam or water as part of the discharge that's coming from the machine. Now, those are those oils that are in there in the valve and in the group that you just otherwise aren't seeing. So that's totally normal and you'll definitely get some discoloration of your water as you're cleaning the group. So let's actually take a look now inside the portafilter and see how we've done as far as removing some of that detergent. So as you can see, we still have a nice foamy mix in here. And if I just push some of that around, I can still see a little bit of the undissolved pieces of detergent in there. So we can lock that back in if we want, or if you want to just go for the five and five, you can dump that out and then proceed to run another five flushes of clean water. So we've back flushed, but let's move on now to our next bit of maintenance that we're going to do. Let's assume in this scenario that we actually have some dirty baskets and our shower screen or our portafilter is also similarly dirty. Well, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use some of the Ernex Cafe sprays. Now, you may have heard, and we have recommended in videos, that you can use Kefiza as a solution, a solvent, to break down those oils on things like your portafilter and baskets, and you can let them soak in a mixture of kafiza and hot water. This is acceptable, but if you have metal, especially, say, like on your portafilter baskets that have a finish on them, like a nanotech coating, for instance, there is going to be a bit of aggressive cleaning from that kafiza because of the acidity. So if you want to preserve the life of those finishes a little bit longer, there is a slightly more gentle way that you can go about cleaning. We will use the Ernex Cafe sprays for that, but we'll go ahead and remove the portafilter, tip that into the drip tray, and I'll take my basket, pop the back flush disc out, and what we can do is, let's just say we had some coffee oils in there, we can go right on ahead with our sprays, give that a nice spray in there, let that sit in there and soak for a bit, spray out our basket as well, and then he even recommends that if you want, you can go right ahead and spray that group inside there as well. And then what we'll do, and this is actually great too if you need to just wipe out some of the oils on the drip tray, is we can wait for that cleaning solution for about, let's say, 30 seconds to a minute, and then go ahead and wipe dry, and you'll find that those oils really wipe off much more easily, and that is the Ernex Cafe Sprays. Moving on from our espresso cleanup, let's take a look at what we can do to maintain the steam wand. So if you make a lot of milk drinks on your Casa 5, this is going to be some great advice for you to just keep the machine nice and clean. Now, one thing though is that the really best thing that you could be doing is just to make sure that you are wiping down 
and purging this wand after use. And so, you know, you can see this is metal. This is very reflective and polished. If there's still milk solids on there, you can see it. You can really give it some elbow grease and wipe that off. But the best way, too, to really purge the wand, you'll have some leftover pressure from the steam, I'm sure, after you're done steaming. But if you really want, you can run the pump and flush some water through it. And that's going to get any of that milk up in there out. But let's say, for instance, that uh, you wanted to take it the next step. You wanted to go a little bit further than that. I'm going to take a moment. I'll fill this pitcher up with water, and I'll be right back to show you what you can do. So I've got my hot water, and the trick I'm about to show you is something that you should really only be doing once a week as you back flush, and also, again, really only if you're not diligent about purging your steam wand out. If you are regularly wiping down and purging your steam wand, what I'm about to show you is really very, very optional. But basically, we've got our hot water here, and we've switched the machine into steaming mode. The reason that it's in steaming mode is because I need to create a vacuum in the steam wand here to draw that hot water up in it. We'll actually froth this hot water, close the valve while the wand is submerged, and then that will draw water up to loosen and break down any milk that's inside the wand. With that done, we'll simply allow the water to sit in the wand for about a minute. Then, once a minute has passed, you can open the valve, purge that out, and repeat the process up to five times, at minimum three, to really make sure that we've broken down any of the milk in there. So I've showed you how to clean the wand by sucking up some hot water, but let's take it a step further. Let's say that it's really dirty and you really want something to make sure that you've cleaned it completely. This is where something like a Rinza from Urnex comes in handy. These are specifically formulated milk cleaning solutions, meaning that they're designed to break down milk residue in particular. I'm going to show you how to use one of these M61 tablets. I just find I prefer using the dry cleaner. All we need to do is add water to it, and it will make a solution. So this bottle, for example, this is a 4-ounce Rinza bottle. That gets you four cleans. This bottle in particular here, that's 120 tablets. You get a clean per tablet, so math on that one's pretty solid. But we'll take our tablet, drop it into our big pitcher, and then the small pitcher here does have uh, use other than just looking cute by comparison. We'll go ahead and pour that hot water I've got in there in with our tablet. And so all I need to do, you'll see it kind of start foaming. It's like Alka-Seltzer or something like that. Give it a nice stir here. Hopefully you'll have something uh, more handy than this brush that I'm using to stir with. Uh, but get that nice and foamy. And it's just like with our Kafiza, we really want to make sure that our tablet is fully dissolved so uh, I can still kind of hear it rattling around in there. I'm going to go ahead and just give this another swirl. And it's a good thing that our machine is still in steam mode because we're actually about to repeat the same process that we just used. So now instead of frothing water, I'm going to be frothing milk cleaning solution. So we'll go right on ahead and put this wand in again. And then when we froth, and close the valve, it's going to draw up milk cleaning solution into the steam wand. And just like before, we're going to let that sit for about a minute, purge, and then repeat up to five times to really clean out the inside of that steam wand. And so to purge, obviously, we can just maybe not use this pitcher since there's something in it, but go ahead, put something else there, and blast that steam back out. So obviously that wasn't a minute. You'll want to wait an entire minute before we make our purge. And then when we're all done, we'll simply go ahead and switch the machine out of steaming mode. And then we can use this pitcher here and just go on ahead and purge until water comes out of the wand.
So we've covered milk cleaning, let's take a look now at something much more basic, which is the drip tray. So the drip tray catches water not just from the group here, but also from your solenoid valve. So even if you constantly have something under the group to catch drips, water is still going to make its way in here just by virtue of you brewing with the machine. So eventually you're going to have to empty this out one way or the other. And so to remove the tray, simply pull it out like this. And as you can see here, we've got the frame and then it's back in here where the solenoid valve actually discharges. So if I take this cover off, you can see on the back of the grate, there's this hole, that's where the water from the solenoid valve flows through. So if you ever put this back on, you wanna make sure this hole is facing in the back toward the machine. That's gonna let it drain properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually dump this out into the sink and then I'll show you putting it back on. Once you've got that emptied out, you can take a towel, give it a nice dry down, and the drip tray itself is the favorite place for coffee and coffee oils to really build up. So if it's ever kind of gross, something again like that Urnex Cafe Sprays does a great job of just getting things broken down. And now, just to show you the other side here, we do have kind of a little frame here that bends down. This fits underneath the sides. So you really just need to line it up when you're ready to put it back in and you can slide it back on. Now, I would recommend, even though this drip tray is fairly substantial, that you don't let it get too full. It can hold to, you know, up to about 30 ounces of water. Uh, you'll know that you're really in the danger zone when you start to see water kind of pooling up in between these grates. It can be tricky to balance these on the way to the sink. Trust me, I've spilled more water than I care to admit. But otherwise, that's how you'd take care of the drip tray on the Casa 5. That's it for the ECM Casa 5. Again, this is one of my favorite single boiler espresso machines. I'm Nick, and thank you so much for watching.